Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Gamma Die Gamma. So uh, this video is sort of like a, a refresher on the, the various methods of evaluating integrals that I have included in my uh, trick integrals playlist. But I'm just gonna do an example by two methods. It shouldn't be long. I'm just gonna show you quickly so that you don't forget the methods we've discussed so far. So let's get started. Integral to evaluate is, I'm gonna call it i, integral from 0 to in infinity, sin x over x, e raised to negative x dx. So it's sort of like a Dirichlet integral, but we have this exponential, this decaying exponential term here. So how do we solve it? Well, if you read the title correctly, we're gonna use a Feynman technique or Leibniz rule. So parameterize this, you can either parameterize the sign or the decaying exponential. I will choose the exponential just cause I know we've been kind of doing it since uh, evaluating Dirichlet integral by Feynman technique itself. So just do it just cause of convention. So differentiate with respect to the parameter t. You get negative integral from zero to infinity sin x, uh, we are divided by x and then differentiate, use the chain, we'll get an x, e raised to negative tx dx. And the advantage of using this method is the denominator is sort of gotten rid of. Okay, uh, and then if you notice what this is, this is just the Laplace transform of sine of x with respect to t, you can clearly see the variable of integration is the input variable and uh, the free variable with the exponential is the output variable. If you can just refer to the table of Laplace transforms, you'll know that this guy is negative because of that. One over output variable squared plus one because the sign had one multiplied with the x. Okay, uh, now our integral i let's see, is actually i when uh, t equals one minus some value of t where like the entire thing is zero. So it's zero as a t goes to infinity. To convert this into some uh, an integral form by using the fundamental theorem of calculus is negative integral from one to infinity, i prime of t dt. This is just the fundamental theorem of calculus in play. So we just have a negative cancels with this. Integral from one to infinity of dt over t squared plus one. This is pretty simple, we know this. The inverse tangent of t evaluated at both one and zero. Uh, so in one and infinity. So for infinity, we have pi over two my minus uh, inverse tangent of one is pi over four. This just evaluates to pi over four and that is the answer. That's how simple this question really is. Uh, this video is not actually about the difficulty of the integral itself, but it's sort of like a refresher. This was the first way, a nice way of doing it, uh, a definitive way of doing it. I'm gonna do another way, which is way quicker. Okay, again, the, of course, the same question. And as the, the title of the page suggests, Laplace transform, this shouldn't be a surprise given that we sort of got the Laplace transform of uh, sine of x with respect to t in, in the Feynman technique method. So it shouldn't be a surprise that, you know, Laplace transform method works too. And how does that work? If you remember a formula I had, we can convert this guy into a product of a Laplace transform of uh, the integrand, I forgot the dx. So this is gonna be say sine of x e raised to negative dx and an inverse Laplace of the other bit of the function. I've proven th this property in a video. I hope uh, you find that video. I think I can add a card. You'll find this video, it's pretty useful. This is a really powerful property if you know how to use it. Again, we want like all of these things to converge, of course. 
Why did I take one over X as the inverse Laplace? That's because it, the, the inverse Laplace of this one over X is trivial. If you do that, well, in this case, the input and output variables are the same. We're going to get for this, we have to use the sort of the, the shifting theorem. So because Laplace transform sine of X will be shifted because we have this exponential in so shifted by a one. So we have X plus one, the whole thing squared plus one. And then the inverse Laplace of one over X is just one. And see, that's why I chose that as the inverse Laplace. And this is just simple, right? Again, the inverse tangent of this time, X plus one, evaluate from zero to infinity. Well, at infinity, infinity plus one is still infinity. Pi over two minus inverse tangent of one for X equals zero is pi over four. So we have pi over four. So you see how the Laplace transform technique is sort of like an expedited uh, Feynman technique in this case. Again, this may not hold true for like all cases when the Feynman technique fails, Laplace transform can help. When Laplace transform fails, Feynman technique helps. So it may not, this point may not be true every, every time, but it's just a, a beautiful uh, sort of observation here with this question. So that's it for this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel guys. Recommend me to your friends, spread the word of Gamma Diagram in the math community. And in the meantime, stay home, stay safe, keep doing math. Peace out.